In this session, we are going to continue on with our profit calculations under a marginal costing system and an absorption costing system. But now we're going to see an additional complication or thing we need to consider in relation to our absorption costing profit calculation. In the last session, we looked at a straightforward profit calculation under each of the two systems. We're going to do those profit calculations again, but now we're going to see in our absorption costing system how we deal with any under or over absorption as part of our profit calculations. So we have another exercise here then. We have a company produces a single product with the following budget. And we have the per unit budgeted information. Then we're told that our fixed production overheads are budgeted at £10,000 per month, where our budgeted production is 5,000 units. Now we want to do our profit calculation based on production and sales of 4,800 units using an absorption costing system and a marginal costing system. And we're told that assume that all costs were as budget. Now we're going to do our absorption costing profit calculation first. However, we're going to begin by considering our complication. In other words, first we are going to look and see during the period, did we have any under or over absorption? So, let's have a think about it. In an absorption costing system, at the start of the period, remember we will calculate an overhead absorption rate. So our overhead absorption rate for our fixed production overheads will be our budgeted divided by our budgeted activity. Well, okay then. If we have a look at the information we were given in the question, we were told that our budgeted fixed production overheads were £10,000 and our budgeted activity was 5,000 units. So our overhead absorption rate would be equal to £10,000 divided by our activity of 5,000 units. So our overhead absorption rate is two pounds per unit. If you think back to our absorption costing chapter, we said at the start of the period, we calculate our overhead absorption rate based on budgeted information. Now we know actual results are unlikely to be the very same as our budgeted information. So at the end of the period, we must calculate any under or over absorption and adjust our income statement or our profit and loss account for that under or over absorption. So for this company then, we need to work out any under or over absorption. A quick reminder then of how we do that. So to calculate any under or over absorption, first we need to work out the overhead absorbed, which will be our actual activity multiplied by our overhead absorption rate. Then we need to compare that to our actual overhead cost. 
and we compare the two to calculate any under or over absorption. So for this question then, first we'll calculate our overhead absorbed. Now we know our overhead absorption rate is two pounds, but what was our actual activity? Let's have a look back at the question. We're told our actual activity was 4,800 units. So our overhead absorbed then will be our actual activity of 4,800 multiplied by our overhead absorption rate of 2. So by the end of the period, our overhead absorbed is 9,600. So this is the overhead cost we have charged to our production account by the end of the period. What was our actual overhead cost? Let's have a look back at the question to see. Well, we're told that our budgeted fixed production overheads were £10,000. And at the very end, we're told that all costs were as budget. So we can assume then that our actual fixed production overhead cost was also £10,000. Just putting that into our pro forma. Our actual overhead cost of £10,000. So now we can calculate any under or over absorption. Remember, if our overhead absorbed is less than our actual overhead cost incurred, then we have underabsorbed. So we have not charged enough in fixed production overheads to our production account. The difference is 400, so this is our underabsorption. Now what we're going to see when we do our profit calculation next is that in an absorption costing system, we need to show our overhead absorbed and our under or over absorption separately. So, once we've calculated our under absorption, now we can move on to our profit calculation. We'll begin, as always, with our sales revenue, we'll just, which will just be our selling price multiply by the number of units we have sold. Our selling price per unit was £10, and we have sold 4,800 units. So our total sales revenue, 48,000. We're in an absorption costing system, so the next thing we're going to look at are the production costs. Okay, so we'll begin then with our variable production costs. We had direct materials. We're told our direct material cost per unit is £3. For 4,800 units gives us 14,400. Next we have our direct labour. Our direct labour is £2 per unit for 4,800 units. Gives us 9,600. Our next variable production cost is our variable production overheads. One pound per unit for 4,800 units. So we get 4,800. Now the next thing we will look at is the fixed production overhead we have charged to our production account based on our overhead absorption rate. 
So this will be our fixed production overhead absorbed. We calculated this when we were working out the under or over absorption and we said our fixed production overhead absorbed would be 9,600. Now we need to adjust for our under absorption. We know that our underabsorption was 400 pounds. The question is, do we add this on to our total production costs or do we take it away? Remember, if we have underabsorbed, then that means we did not charge enough to our production account for our fixed overhead costs. In other words, this £9,600 was not enough. Our fixed production overheads were £400 more than that. If we have an underabsorption, then we need to increase our production costs by the underabsorption amount. So we need to add on that £400 to calculate our total production costs. So if we add them all together then, our variable production costs plus our fixed overheads absorbed plus our underabsorption. You should get a total production cost of 38,800. Now remember, we take this figure away from our sales revenue to calculate gross profit. Our sales revenue figure was 48,000 minus our production costs of 38,800 gives us a gross profit figure of 9,200. Once again, we don't have any non-production cost information, so that's just zero. So our net profit is 9,200. And that's our absorption costing profit calculation done. The key thing to remember here is that an underabsorption increases our production costs which means we'll see in our next session that an overabsorption decreases production costs. All right, the next part of our exercise then asks us to calculate our profits using a marginal costing system. This should be very straightforward because we don't need to consider any under or overabsorption. Under a marginal costing system, again, we start with our sales revenue. This will be the very same as our absorption costing system, selling price multiplied by number of units sold. In a marginal costing system, the next thing we will look at is our variable costs. We've done the calculations for these already, so we just need to make sure we include the right things. So our variable costs will be our direct materials of 14,400, our direct labor of 9,600, and our variable overheads of 4,800. Working at our total then, total variable cost is 
800. So very straightforward. We need to subtract our total variable costs from our sales revenue to calculate what? Of course, our total contribution. So we get a total contribution figure. Sales revenue, 48,000, minus our total variable costs of 28,800. And we get 19,200. Our final step then in our marginal costing system is to deduct our fixed costs. We know that our fixed costs were £10,000 in total, so we get a profit then of 9200 And that's our marginal costing profit calculation complete.